All right, hey guys, how you guys doing? Uh, today I want to try to make a little track that kind of outlines a couple of things. Uh, really, it's to outline some of the features of my Akai Fire script, Fire NFX V2. Um, but additionally, um, you'll get some insight into how I actually might create something. Um, I'm definitely not feeling super creative in the moment because I've been doing a lot of programming and programming is more of a logical, technical thing. So I don't expect to make a, a great track, but it's, it'll be good enough for you to understand what I'm doing. And uh, uh, you'll see some of my um, procedure, some of my own workflow, and it might even bring insight into why uh, the Akai Fire script that I wrote uh, does things in certain ways because it really it does try to follow uh, a workflow scenario. Okay, and with that being said, uh, I'm talking about using the Fire kind of as an extension to, let's say, your, your MIDI keyboard. You know, you, you get a MIDI keyboard, it has a lot of bells and whistles on it but what it doesn't have normally is as many pads as the Akai Fire does. If you have an Akai Fire I would recommend you try my script. Uh, it's easy enough to switch from one script to another so you can always go right back even in the same uh, session you know you decide you need something in the original script you just enable it do what you need to do you then can enable another script like my script to do other things that you need to do it's it's no big deal um, so uh, let's just get started I guess uh, one thing I want to point out is that I generally use a template as a default starter for my work um, the template you see on screen is one I developed for use with my uh, first script but uh, it's good enough for me to use in, um, in most situations. And uh, that's what I do. So uh, I would recommend if you are going to be using the fire, or actually even if you weren't going to be using the fire, I would recommend that you develop your own templates. And part of the reason is, you know, you, you get the color coding, but it also uh, uh, helps you to quickly go to things that you know you might want to do as in the case of today I want to go and I want to add some parts I could quickly switch to them they're all ready to go or if I want to change let's say my bass from one sound to another I could do that but the bass channel the bass mixer channel the bass pattern is ready to go it's it's there um, and that's kind of my philosophy with that is uh, if I have all these things ready for me all I need to do is let myself fill in the blanks, so to speak. So this is what you're going to see me do today. Um, I'm not going to try to over explain every feature. I probably talked en enough already on the intro, uh, but I'll, I'll kind of cover it. If you want more detailed information, um, please watch my video, my other videos, and also please go check out the uh, the slideshow I'm working on. It's it's pretty, uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's complete, but it, there's a lot there. It's like 80% there. Uh, the link would be in the description or around somewhere. Um, but, uh, but I would look at that. It's got much cleaner picture. I know my picture, uh, my video rather is very poor, but it's the only way the buttons look the right color. If I didn't, if I didn't have that set up the way that way, those buttons would be glowing like bright white, and you wouldn't know what color was was was. Uh, I'm talking about these guys right here. So <clears throat> let's just jump right in. And remember, we're not using this as a performance device. We're not trying to. While well, we can, and I'm going to show you this, we're not. It's not built with the idea of you're going to sit down and and uh, perform on this device uh, this is more of a creative tool um, a workflow helper if you will okay so with all that being said 
we're in pattern mode and pattern mode uh, is going to allow us to navigate quickly to patterns and channels as needed. I happen to just want to lay down a, um, a, uh, a simple chord progression. So I'm going to go to my keys channel and uh, I'm going to go into note mode. I'm going to enable a C major uh, scale. Okay. And we're going to build off of this. Now, one thing I, I did want to point out, uh, I'm going to turn on the chord bar. I'm going to turn off the seventh for now. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Firefox. And I just wanted to show you guys this. If you see over there, it says common chord progressions. And then it lists uh, five of them there. Um, those numbers are Roman numerals, as most of you probably know, and they represent a number, an actual number, right? So like IV represents four, and V represents five, right? I represents one, etc. So if we look at those numbers, those numbers correspond to the same order of these blue buttons on the chord bar. So if you're just looking for a quick way of getting a chord progression, you could do exactly this. For example, if I look at the first chord progression there, it's one, four, five. So we go one, four, five. Right? By the way, as you're playing these chords, it's going to show you the chord that it's playing here. So it'll say like C major, F major, G major. I guess they're all major. Uh, let's look at the second one. It's one, five, four, I'm sorry, one, five, six, four. That's the, uh, the axis chord progression, isn't it? I think. Anyway, when you play the chord, you can see that the, the notes are being displayed that make up that chord. Um, but this is a quick and easy way to get a, a chord progression. I just wanted to show you that even though we're not going to use uh, those chord progressions. Uh, I'm going to go a little more simple and I'm going to go for a, a, a slower, dreamier kind of uh, 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 sound. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to turn on the seventh, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for um, a one four. That's all we're going to do, one four, with the seventh. Uh, so let's set the uh, tempo. To set the tempo, I'm going to hold down shift, and I'm going to tap it over here. That might be a little faster than I wanted, but we'll start there. We'll see what's going on. If I hold shift, I'm also going to uh, turn, make sure the metronome is turned on. My loop record was turned on and I have a countdown. So now we'll hit record and we'll record the, the keyboards. And now it's recorded. Now, when it plays back, you'll notice it doesn't play the entire chord. So when I press the key, it's playing the chord for me. When I press play, you only see one note. And that's a limitation of FL Studio uh, cannot give me more than one note. So I can only show you on the playback one note at that point. So. I wish it was different, but that's, you know, we, we just move forward with it, right? So now we have this part recorded. I'm going to bring up the piano roll by clicking the button there. And you notice it turns yellow to let me know the piano roll is open uh, from the device. Uh, so once we're in the piano roll, one of the things I want to do is just inspect it. It, it looks like it snapped correctly uh, to the starting positions because I do have that setting. Let me just show, use the mouse to show you. Up here, 
uh, if you right click on record, you can tell it um, to quantize automatically the no note start time and to leave the duration. Those are the two that I, I check. Uh, and then over here, I only record the notes uh, when I'm using the, um, the Akai, but if you needed to, rec uh, to record the automation, you would check that as well. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's where that setting goes. So we have uh, on the screen the piano roll. I can open and close it as needed from the fire right here. Um, and I'm in note mode over here. Uh, so what, one thing I want to do is I want to quant uh, uh, stretch these out so that the notes go to the end of each part. Because you could see there's some space uh, between where the notes start. And end. I happen to have a macro predefined. It's this green one down here. I'm going to press it. And what it's done is it's it's done a quantize, but it was already quantized. And then it's done a, um, oh, what the heck? I forgot what it was called. Not a legato. It's done an articulate. It's done an articulate to stretch everything out for me. Um, and I think I might actually want this an octave up. So I'm going to hit this octave up and now everything just moved an octave up if I play it and I think that's high enough I also in this case just for fun want to want to add some strum to it so I'm going to do that manually okay I'm going to go on my uh, normal keyboard and hit alt s and it strummed it I'll just accept my default settings and this is what we ended up with Now let me point out when you do use uh, any kind of note input with the with the uh, fire, you're going to have limited uh, velocity. I'm going to use my mouse just to show you where I'm talking about. See down here, everything is exactly the same, and that's just how it is. Okay, uh, like I said, this is not a performance device. This is an input and control surface type device for me. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to just move forward with that understanding, right? Okay, so we have this. Uh, might I want to add anything more? Let me listen to it once or twice. No, I don't want to add anything else to that. So let's move on. Uh, OK, so we have some nice chords going there. Uh, let me go to add some more nice chords. Why not? Actually, one thing I could do while I'm here is I'm going to copy these notes. Uh, then I'm going to go to my um, guitar. And I'm going to paste these notes. Uh, they are strummed, which I don't want. So I'm going to do a quick quantize only just to uh, line them up. Actually, I'll, yeah, let's do that. Now we're lined up. Uh, I'm going to hide that, bring up the plug-in. And let me move this plug-in into view just so it's fully into view. Because on this plug-in, let me bring it forward. On this plugin, I need to set up the play mode, the strumming to auto, and some voicing, which for me, I've already preset it to uh, the fire recognize it. So I'm putting this in user one mode, and that's going to let me control, and I'm going to have to use the mouse to show you. It's going to let me control this section here, play mode. And watch, I'm going to use this button. So you can see I, I can set my play mode. I want it set to guitar. It's going to allow me to control this auto button here, which is currently dim. I need that to be on. It's going to let me control the chord type and the position. Uh, I want it movable root, but I want the position like around the fifth fret. So we're going to do that. Now I'm, I'm using the mouse to show you these things, okay? But normally I wouldn't have to move the mouse around. So I'm going to just set the mouse back down. And now when we go into note mode, 
we're getting some auto strumming of the chords. But th that's not a seventh chord, obviously, because it's not playing a seventh. There we go. So that's what we should be seeing. Let me hit play. I'm going to turn it so it only plays this pattern. That F is in a seventh. And the reason is it's playing too high an octave uh, to where this plug-in does it's running over into what are called these strumming keys right here. So that F chord was playing. I'm sorry. It was it was running into the strumming keys. Let's hit play. Bring up the plug in. Okay, yeah. See how it's running over? Here, watch. You'll see the two green keys here. Okay, so that's that's that. Let's close that. So now it's within these chord keys. Perfect. So now it's saying C major 7, F major 7. That's exactly what we want. Now, the reason why uh, it needs to be down there is those strumming keys I'm about to use. I'm about to use... Oh, I accidentally changed the preset. I didn't know what, what uh, menu I was on here. So let me go back. Let me go back, okay. Because I do want that acoustic sound. But now that I've gone back, all my settings are, uh, are not all of them. A couple of them reset. We'll just reset this real quick. There we go. And now, hopefully, when I'm in the correct menu... which is this one, uh, I will go to, back to my chromatic keyboard, and I can now control the strumming, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm just showing you, this is not a Akai Fire feature, this is a feature of the plugin, but here we go. back into song mode I'll go back to my pattern mode so I can go quickly to other things I want to go back to my my channel here my keys channel get a decent uh, ratio now I want to get rid of that metronome so I'm going to go to my short FPC channel and let me uh, let me show that to you let me reset my screen real quick um, in the uh, playlist you can see I can scroll around in there but it doesn't all fit right so I'm going to show you a feature here obviously I could just hit uh, a, a four on my on my uh, uh, PC keyboard but if you double click this button here which is the button to activate the playlist if I double click it it'll automatically fit it in to the screen for me. If I wanted to customize the zoom, I could hold uh, Alt and select and zoom it in one direction. I can press Shift and zoom it in the other direction while, while turning this control knob. So I can find the exact, maybe I like it a little bigger, but the only thing is I want, I want to see those blue, uh, those blue ones because that's what I'm recording into. So currently I'm in FPC short which is the middle blue one you could see. And I'm just going to record uh, a drum part. When I hit drum over here, it's switched over to the FPC. It is in a, a kit where the colors down here in this last row you could see are not, are not lighting up. Let me, uh, whoops, wrong button. Let me bring up that. Scroll it so you guys could see it. So these down here, which are yellow, aren't here. And there's a thing where if the color's at a, at, at a certain shade, it just, it doesn't show up. It's like, 
it's like the uh, fire has half of the colors uh, available to it. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, just to demonstrate it, by the way, is uh, I'll go ahead and use the fire to pick a preset. So what I've done is I've gone into my menu, ULDR, which gives me an up, down, left, right, and a menu button. Then I'm gonna use the up, down, left, right, like arrow keys, just to navigate to the one I want, hit the green key for enter. And all you have to use the mouse to show you, it's the same kit basically, but now the colors are down here. It's kind of fixed with the color. Um, and I think it has an, an added closed hat up there in the yellow section. And you can see I color code areas. So these blue ones are all kicks. The red or pinkish ones are all uh, snare. Uh, yellows are hats. Purples are uh, symbols. Greens are uh, snap claps. Uh, these bluish, greenish ones are bongos. These are, I don't remember. Oh, tambourines. It's a little low. <clears throat> but all these groups, by the way, are routed into the mixer. So I could go to my shakers, turn up that mixer. So, yeah, these are tams, more ringing type, and these are more shaker type. Anyway, so that's the kit I'm working with. They don't need to be that loud, to be honest. Let me turn those down. Okay. Uh, and that's, you know, part of the FPC, but you can see how I quickly can access my mixer. Uh, I just activate the mixer window here. It changes to mixer here, which means all these knobs automatically control mixer. And this knob over here scrolls me through quickly, easily. And it's the same for channels if I, if I needed to navigate to a new channel, but I'm, I'm trying to record this part. So let's do that. Okay. Let's just quickly record it. Okay, now I can turn off the uh, metronome and we'll just have this kind of uh, hi-hat part to help, help keep time. Okay, so what's next? What's next? Um... Uh, well, we could add more drums or we could add bass, I suppose. So let's go back to pattern mode. What do we want to deal with? We want to, let's deal with bass. We're going to deal with bass. We'll go back into note mode. Why not? Okay, so. Let's hit record. I'm going to have to figure out. I'm just going to follow the one four type of thing at first. enough oh we didn't need the chord bar for that section i guess okay so what else can we do oh let's add a little little of this we'll go here go back into note mode why not let's use the chord bar again and we'll record some like uh offbeat uh Reggae-ish. I'm not going for reggae, but you know how they, they hit on the offbeat sort of. Let's let's do that. Is that too much? Maybe it is. Let's undo. Let's see, let's try something else. Turn the volume. 
volume down. That's good enough. I'm just trying to fill in space at this point. Remember, I'm not trying to make a banger here. Okay, so let's let's add some drums. Let's let's go ahead and add the drums now. So I'm going into my main one. Uh, actually, let's go into the long one first. This, this one is one that covers all four uh, bars of this loop. So we'll put some symbols at the beginning, and then I'll try to add some uh, other stuff throughout. Okay, now we'll add some kick and snare. I'll just use this pattern to move to the right pattern. And we'll hit record. I doubled the line just so it's be a little bit stronger. Well, we have something now, right? And you've seen me create a lot of it with just this. Of course, I did use a lot of the note mode, and I'm not done. Because quite honestly, we need some kind of a little melody fl floating over this now. So let's get out of chord mode. But let's do something where, what are we going to use for our lead instrument? Uh, we could go with, hmm, hmm. I'm a bit torn. I want to use a guitar, but there's not a, but I could use, let's use this one. Let's just use this. We'll add a little something with this one. So let's see, this is, uh, oh, these are plucks. Okay, so, right, these are, this is my, what I would normally call my rhythm section, but it can be used for whatever. So. Let me go to a different preset. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm just going down through the presets. Not bad. Some of these are not, this will be good enough, I think. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, pentatonic mode. So we're still in C major, but what we've done is we've re re removed a couple more notes to uh, make it easier just to solo in and not hit a wrong note, if you know what I mean. All right, well, let's see if we can come up with something. Actually, let me listen to it once without recording. See if I can develop something here. By the way, these you might see right here where my fingers are going. When I'm playing or recording, these are going in sequence at each beat. 
And when I'm on the last bar, these will be red. And that's how visually I will know where I'm at in my loop. Uh, regardless of what sound is going on, I have a visual indicator. I just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to go ahead and try to record. Uh, like that, that sort of thing. That's, that's a little too loud. I don't know, something like that. Let's let's just try it. I think I should I should end on that one, huh? Let's uh undo. Let's give it another shot. I think because I'm in a pentatonic mode, I couldn't hit the note I needed. Let's just look at it real quick. Yeah, I'm using the mouse. Because I want to move one of these notes. Doesn't sound right. I think that's where I want to be. Not sure. Let me see. Nope. Well, maybe it's right there. Right, let's see. Eh, no. That's, there we go. That's good enough. Okay, let's hear it all together. Maybe that's not good enough, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And I want it lower. Yeah, that's good. But that kind of sounds like it wants an answer, though, right? Like a call and answer type of thing. So let's go to the next pattern, and I'm going to bring this up. Oh, this might be an all right one to use. Uh, oh, no, this wouldn't be. Let's, let me go to the talk box. Wah. And... All right, let, let me just see what's going on here. Let me close that piano roll. That's not a good sound. That's not a good sound. Uh, let me use let me use my uh, mouse here. Maybe I just want a piano sound, you know. Let me just bring up a uh, a grand piano.
really don't know. I don't want to answer the same, but let, let, I'm just going to record it. Let's go. Okay, good enough. So from here, uh, quite honestly, I would probably uh, try to develop a better melody, but that would take way too long right now. Um, and actually, I would develop multiple me melodies. And what I mean by that is I would probably, um, I'm just going to show you, this has nothing to do with the fire per se, uh, but I would essentially take my, my parts, okay, and and just copy them over and over and then i would make one big long new track or pattern right if you want to by the way if you want to make a new pattern let's say i want to make a new guitar pattern so i want the pattern based off the same color as this one right so i'll hold down alt and hit that it'll make a new pattern for me and throw me in that pattern at this point i can go to my guitar uh, that's my bass actually i can go to my guitar and i'm going to use the mouse to do this because there's no uh, way to do this um, e easily with with the FL uh, scripting at the moment. I'm going to clone this channel. After I clone it, I'm going to go to. And I'm doing this with the mouse just because, as I'm saying, it's it's less complicated. And I I don't want you to think I'm trying to tell you that the fire is the end of everything, like it's going to replace everything. No, it's it's a tool, right? And that's what I'm showing you. So we're in our new pattern. We're uh, on the new thing. You know what? It's, it, uh, let me just change the color of it uh, to differentiate, if you will. Uh, we'll make it a darker red. I'll accept that. There we go. So now my channel down here is a darker red. Um, and I guess that's it. Actually, you know what? I, I, I could have changed the channel of this to that color. Like, see how it's a... a, a I'll just demonstrate it. You know what? I'm I'm an idiot. Let me just demonstrate it. So let's just say this this was a green color, okay? And I wanted this green one to be this re uh, same color as the pattern, which is red, right? So I could just hold down Shift. They're both selected. I could hold down Shift and hit that green color, and it now sucks down the color of the red. So that's another way I could have done it with actually without having to use the mouse. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so here I am in a new. Uh, but I don't want this one in guitar mode. I want this one in keyboard mode, which is going to let me play actual notes, right? Which is what I want. And I can't play. It only goes down to there. All right. So let's hit play. Oh, no. What I was going to tell you is <clears throat> what I would do is I would take my uh, arrangement over here. And I'm doing this with the uh, mouse. I would select it. I would copy it, let's just say four times, right? And then I would take my guitar and I just put it here and I'd stretch it out like this. Just like that. Okay. I could even do this longer if I wanted to. Um, by the way, uh, I'm not running the beta right now, but FL21 beta is out. And. I believe FL21 will have uh, a way of doing what I'm going to show you I'm, I'm doing, but easily, which is basically just recording uh, multiple takes. So what this is allowing me to do is do multiple four bar takes, if you will. Then I can split this later, right? So if I was just going to, and, and I'm just going to freestyle, it's not going to be good in, in many places and it, it's going to be very bad and somewhat good and it's might be salvageable you know i'm just trying to lay down ideas at this point to to spark other things or to capture uh, a moment so i'm just going to try to solo if you will over this it's it's going to come out terrible but let's give it a shot all right so i'm all stopped and everything and let's do this All right, 
let's just jump right in. Okay, so, okay, so out of out of that take, right? Uh, there might be a part or two I can cut and use. Like, I'm just going to use my mouse again, just letting you know. Like maybe there, maybe there. Let's uh, take that out. That wasn't so bad. Okay, that that got quantized, but it doesn't sound that bad to be honest. I'm gonna leave that in there. But anyway, so like I'm not gonna keep this first part. Uh, I'm not trying to tell you this is the greatest song I'm ever gonna make, but I'm just showing you my kind of technique and using this. Now, that melody I probably would have played on my on my uh, MIDI keyboard. The chords, I would have used this to input. Uh, the drums, I love using the Akai Fire to, to play my drums. Um, the bass line, sometimes, you know, I'll do whatever works for me. And you can see when I'm in these modes, you can't go too wrong with the notes. So, uh, the last part I might do uh, let me take some of this stuff out. Um, the last part I might do, let me just use the fire because it's it's easier, is I have my, uh, my thing there. And we'll go into perform mode. And perform mode is going to allow me to kind of try to uh, make some kind of an arrangement out of it, if you will. So for an example, I might go, let me start with uh, a keyboard and uh, the, the hi-hats, right? So what I've done is I've muted all those tracks except for the keyboard and the hi-hats. Oh, and obviously, let me mute my lead part. And then maybe we'll add the uh, guitars, right? So now I'm starting to think, how do I want to arrange this? This is where I'm getting my ideas. Maybe we'll bring in... Do a little. And then I might, you know, maybe just try to, I'm not going to do it now, think of words. Where is this trying to lead me to? Maybe hum something to get a rhythm, etc. You know, but in this case, I think I'm going to be pretty much finished up. anyway thanks for watching and uh, 
hopefully you'll see some some value now i didn't show you a lot of things okay i didn't show you a lot of things but i, I want to show you what i do the most with it and just to give you a sense of the value i have uh, most of all with this thing but it does a lot more it does a lot more so uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one